Hello friends, welcome to my April wrap up. April was such an amazing reading month for me, which makes me feel really happy because as you guys know, if you watched my March wrap up, March was not the best reading month for me, like mentally. I read quite a bit of books, but my mindset toward reading was more like slumpy. I wasn't really excited to read. That all changed in April. I felt a lot more excited to read. I really enjoyed what I was reading. I just felt really happy about reading and excited again. And that is due to all the books I read. I feel like I read quite a bit of hyped books this month that I had been putting off and I ended up absolutely loving them. So I'm so excited to talk about them all. Before we get into it, I want to open a little beverage so we have something to drink. It's the Olipop Orange Squeeze. So good. Let's start with the stats. So I read 15 books this month with a total of 4,771 pages. My top moods were lighthearted, mysterious, funny, emotional, intense. 33% of the books I read were under 300 pages and 67% were between 300 and 499 pages. I read 7% nonfiction and 93% fiction. This was definitely a lower nonfiction reading month for me. I think I kind of got burnt out on nonfiction a little bit and so I really leaned into the fiction books which was super fun. My top three genres were romance, contemporary, and young adult, and my average star rating was 3.96, so that is pretty good, almost a four star rating. So those are all my stats. Let's just get straight into the books I read. So I started off the month reading No Judgments by Meg Cabot. This is part of a interconnected standalone trilogy that she has. Meg Cabot is mainly known for her middle grade books, I think. Like there's The Princess Diaries. I think I read a series called like The Airhead, and that was like, like my favorite from her but she's really known for those younger series and I feel like that kind of translates to her adult series it felt like kind of I don't know I felt like the humor was a little juvenile a bit I felt like the main characters were kind of acting younger than they were like they were supposed to be 30 years old and they were kind of doing some stuff that I felt like maybe a 15 year old would do so that was a bit weird but anyway let me tell you what this book is about so this book follows Brie she just moved to Lowbridge Island and the storm of the century is about to hit the island and so she decides to wait it out, stay on the island, because a lot of times the weathermen kind of make the storm seem worse than they are and nothing ends up happening so you evacuate for no reason. But as she stays on the island she realizes that a lot of people have evacuated and that they have left their pets behind. So Brie is an animal lover so she goes on a mission to save all the pets but she is forced to get help from one of the grumpy townspeople Drew. So they're kind of working together before the storm and then during the storm they're separate and then in the aftermath of the storm they're kind of working together as well. And it was okay. It was just like a cute fun read. It wasn't anything spectacular. I thought there was a lot of cute moments in the story and I also really liked the setting but like I mentioned there's just some elements of the writing where I feel like my Cabot's strong suit is middle grade books so I mean I would recommend it if you want a quick easy beach read. I also really loved the animal element to it. I thought it was so cute when she was saving the animals. Overall I just feel kind of mad about this book. If you read my Cabot's middle grade books I feel like you may like her adult novels too but you can't go in expecting like a uh, Emily Henry book or an Abby Hannah's book because it's just like vastly different I feel. I ended up giving this one three stars. It was fun, but overall nothing too memorable. I also read the second book this month. That one is called No Offense, and I read that towards the end of the month where I read No Judgments at the beginning of the month, but No Words follows Molly. She's a librarian, and in this book someone leaves a baby in the bathroom of the library, so when she finds the baby she calls the police station obviously and the police officer comes, and immediately Molly and this police officer kind of butt heads a little bit, but throughout the book they keep running into each other and gradually they kind of start to feel things for each other and this was I don't know I don't know how to describe my habits books. Her female main characters are like I don't know I guess the best way to describe it is sometimes their thought process and their inner monologue was a little bit cringe for me to read and so that really put me off from this book. I definitely feel like some people may like it it just wasn't for me. I ended up giving this one 2.75 stars and I just I didn't like it I just thought it was super cringe. I did feel like there's some some cute moments between the main characters but those were few and far between and Meg Cabot kind of makes her characters do like weird things like things that just don't make sense <laughs> and if you've read these books I you probably know what I'm talking about but it's so hard to describe without spoiling anything I guess it's just the same as what I said earlier she just makes her characters act younger than they are and as a reader like the things she 
she says the things she does is like kind of irrational like you wouldn't actually do this in real life if that makes sense but since the baby was left in the library's bathroom there's kind of a mystery throughout the book and that is one of the only parts i ended up enjoying i thought that was kind of interesting to figure out what happened why the baby was left there who the mother was so that was one of the redeeming parts of this book but overall nothing memorable i probably wouldn't really recommend this one i think the first book in the series i would recommend and see if you kind of like her writing style and even if you do like her writing style i probably still would not recommend the second book i feel like i'm usually pretty nice in my reviews so this is kind of weird for me to be kind of like not nice about a book but it just was not for me and that's okay and it may be for you and that's also okay but yeah i still decided to continue with the third book and i finished that one yesterday but that will be in my may wrap up overall it was kind of a fun series but i feel like the bad outweighed the good in this situation so the next book i read was open throat by henry hook i found out about this book when i was reading a newsletter on substack i saw that it was kind of a shorter read a quick read and one thing about me is i love when a book is told from an animal's perspective and this book is told from a mountain lion's perspective and the mountain lion lives in the los angeles hills and it is kind of struggling to survive because of the drought it's harder to find water harder to find food and so we're following this mountain lion in that situation and i really liked it it really portrayed humanity in kind of a hopeful and beautiful way i think and yeah i enjoyed it it was a quick read and definitely made me tear up at some parts i don't want to say too much because i don't want to spoil it and i feel like it's kind of good to go into this one blind but i thought it was a super well done read it's more of a literary fiction book but i loved it i would highly recommend it i ended up giving it four stars i feel like it could have been a little longer and i feel like that would have been fine but i still felt like the point got across in the short amount of pages. I listened to this one as an audiobook and it was a super short listen and so I would highly recommend checking this one out. Then I read Majesty. This is the second book in the American Royal series which I feel like I have talked about so much lately but I have been loving the series so much and I guess while I'm talking about this one I will also talk about Rivals because I also finished this one this month. This series follows four different women. It follows Beatrice. She is the heir to the throne. It follows Samantha. She is the younger sister to Beatrice so if something happens to Beatrice she's the one who will step in and take her place I guess that's why she's called the spare <laughs> and then it follows Nina who is Samantha's best friend and it follows Daphne she's kind of known as the schemer and she just wants to be a princess I went into these books kind of expecting them to be more like romance books but they are more so like a character study for all of these four characters and I really enjoyed it I thought both of these were super fun I gave the second book four stars and the third book 4.5 stars the third book is my favorite so far in the series and this one ended on a huge cliffhanger so I am so excited to read the fourth book but I'm also I also don't want to read it almost because it is the last book in the series. I guess while I am talking about these books, I can also tell you about Inheritance, which is the prequel novella. In the first book, there is lots of references to Samantha's graduation night, and this novella kind of explores everything that happened that night and how it fundamentally changed all of the characters, if that makes sense. And so, yeah, I would just highly, highly recommend the series. It is a lot of fun, but like I said, there is romance in this, but it's not the only thing. It's more so character driven. We're following the characters as they live their life through romance, through life, through struggles, through all that sort of stuff. And yeah, I just loved it. I especially loved Rivals because in the first two books, I feel like that was when I was like forming an attachment to the characters. And throughout this book, I was really attached to the characters. And I also feel like this book had the most growth for the characters. So that made it really fun and interesting to read. This series is just so good. I hardly ever see anyone talk about it. So I highly recommend this and shout out to my younger sister, Kristen, for getting me into this the series. I also want to talk about these next two books together because it's by the same author. Plus I read them in this order. So I read The Maidens and The Fury by Alex Michaelides. These are both thrillers. This is by the same author who wrote The Silent Patient. I really enjoyed both of these books but I gave The Maidens 3.75 stars and The Fury 4 stars but The Maidens follows a girl named Mariana. She is a group therapist and Mariana gets thrust into an investigation when her niece Zoe's friend gets murdered and it 
it happened at her college. So she feels like an attachment to the case and she thinks she knows who the murderer is. So she gets involved in the investigation and it just kind of follows her as she is uncovering things. And it was really interesting. It, one thing about Alex Michelides' books is that there's always going to be a Greek mythology element and a psychology element. And I feel like that really makes him a unique thriller author. I do feel like a lot of thrillers do incorporate some psychological element, but Michelides include more so like the main character is some type of therapist or something like that. So another thing I liked about The Maidens was that you could really feel the ominous creepy vibes by the way it was written. I feel like he has done a great job of making you feel that throughout all of his books. With this one, I kind of guess the plot twist, but not fully. So there was a little element of surprise in it. And yeah, I just really enjoyed it. His books were published, The Silent Patient, The Maidens, The Fury. And one thing I really liked about The Maidens and The Fury was that he incorporated little glimpses of characters from The Silent Patient. I just love when authors include little glimpses like that. But now I'm going to talk about The Fury. The Fury was a very interesting and unique read because it's told in second person where the narrator is like talking directly to you. And I listened to this one and listening to it that way made the whole experience like so much more unique. And this one, I did not see that ending coming at all. This one had a lot of jaw dropping moments for me, but I realized I didn't even explain what this one is about. So this book follows a famous ex-movie star, Lana, and she always invites her friend to stay at her Greek island, but this year is different because someone ends up getting murdered. The story kind of unfolds from there, and like I mentioned, we are watching everything happen from this narrator's perspective, and we're kind of trying to figure out how is he involved, and who is he to Lana, and who is he to all these characters, and it's unlike any thriller I've ever read before, so I would highly recommend it. And yeah, like I mentioned earlier there's little glimpses of Theo and Mariana from The Maidens and the Silent Patient so I thought that was an interesting little tidbit that got added. I feel like I've kind of been in my thriller era and I think I owe that kind of to Alex Michelides because his thrillers have really been able to immerse me into a story without being too scary so if you're wanting to get into thrillers highly recommend his books. Then I read Secretly Yours by Tessa Bailey and I have previously enjoyed Tessa Bailey's works. I feel like that was more towards the beginning of my reading romance era and like before I would have rated It Happened One Summer in Hookline and Secret Five Stars. Now I kind of think they're like a four star read. So I read Secretly Yours and I didn't go in with any expectations. I wasn't for sure how I would feel about this book and I ended up thinking this one was cute. I rated it three stars. It just wasn't anything super spectacular to me. This book follows a girl named Tally. She's a gardener and she has always had a crush on this guy Julian. So when he comes back to town she immediately wants to connect with him. So she works on the gardens on his vineyard and she is very disappointed when he doesn't remember her from high school. So the story kind of goes from there and as she's working on her house she realizes that he is very different from the boy she remembered from high school but they still end up forming a connection. The story kind of goes from there and one part about this is that there is a letter writing element which I really enjoy in books and there's another book I read that also had a letter writing element and I just love that in a book and this book was fun and cute it just wasn't spectacular to me. For some reason I didn't feel super connected to the characters and I didn't care too much about the storyline other than the letters and I don't know. I also feel like Tessa Bailey was trying to incorporate maybe some deeper aspects to the storyline and I feel like it wasn't super well done. Like it was briefly mentioned and then I don't know. It just wasn't my favorite. So I feel like if this sounds interesting to you I would recommend trying it out. I had a good time reading it but it won't be anything super memorable for me in the future. Then I read The Housemaid by Frida McFadden. Shout out to my mom for giving me this book because it was very crazy. It was such a quick read. I pretty much read this in two days. It was so addicting and fast paced. But if you don't know what this is about, it follows Millie. She starts to work as a housemaid for a woman, Nina, and her family. And as she keeps working there, she kind of notices some strange things about Nina and she's trying to figure out why is she like this. Then the story kind of goes from there. I don't want to say too much because 
because this was such a wild ride I did not expect what was going to happen at all and I read this on vacation and I was telling Nate about it and he's like that is crazy and yeah I'm really excited to continue the series it was written in a way that was like very digestible if that makes sense so this is another great thriller to read if you want to get into thrillers it's been a while since I gave a thriller five stars but this was a five star thriller for me highly recommend but check trigger warnings if you are planning to read this then I read The Unhending Mooners by Christina Lauren and this was such a fun quick read it was a perfect vacation read I had kept putting this one off because I wasn't for sure how I would feel since I had seen a lot of mixed reviews on it this was kind of a OG popular book talk book but a lot of people were like oh this isn't worth it or it's overhyped so that put me off for a long time but I am so glad I finally ended up picking it up this book follows Ethan and Olive and they do not like each other at all they are just barely tolerating each other in the wedding party but they end up going on a honeymoon together when the rest of the wedding party gets sick so they go on the honeymoon together and they end up forming a connection and then the story kind of goes from there and I thought it was so cute it was really fun and I will say I kind of wish that the honeymoon element kind of lasted longer but it makes sense why it didn't because we kind of had to see how their relationship would work out in real life and so I understand it but I still wish the vacation vibes lasted a little longer I will say one complaint I do have about this book is the third act conflict it wasn't necessarily my favorite trope and as it was happening it, it made me feel really frustrated but I kind of feel like that was kind of the point so I'm not going to hold it against it too much so I ended up giving this one four stars it was super fun perfect summary beach read I would highly recommend it and then I finally read yours truly by Abby Jimenez and I love this book this was a five star read for me it was so cute and it was everything I wanted in a romance book this book takes place in the same world as part of your world which I read part of your world last year around this time and I absolutely love that one as well so I was super excited to pick this one up. It follows Brianna and Jacob and they work in a hospital together and Jacob doesn't really make the best first impression and he feels really bad about it and so he writes Brianna a letter and he kind of explains that he has social anxiety and why he is the way he is I guess and so the story kind of goes from there and I love this. I love the anxiety representation. It felt very relatable to me as someone with the anxiety and it was just a perfect romance book to me. The way that Rihanna and Jacob showed up for each other and did things for each other and they just understood each other so well and loved each other so well. I just loved it. I can't say enough good things about this and I would highly recommend reading this if you haven't already. I also read 24-6 by Tiffany Schlein and this is one of the nonfiction books I read this month. I wanted to read this one because it was mentioned in The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by John Mark Homer which I read back in March and this one talks about how taking a one day break per week from social media and tech in general can really change your life and I enjoyed this one. I feel like with books about like technology and stuff I feel like I've heard everything before so it felt kind of repetitive in that aspect for me but that's kind of my own fault. I feel like a lot of other people could take something really amazing away from this and another thing about this is that she really kind of explained how to successfully take a tech sabbath and how it changed her life for the better and her family's life so I enjoyed reading about her experience with that. I would recommend if you're diving deep into non fiction books about social media but I do feel like if you just want an introductory book about social media I think I would recommend just reading The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry or Digital Minimalism by Calvin Newport. I feel like those are better introductory books to that. Another thing about this book is I felt like she included a lot of studies in it about effects that social media has on us so I thought that was really well done and interesting but yeah I think that's all I have to say about this book. There's not too much to say about it. It was just educational, interesting, and I enjoyed it. Then I finally read Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber and I have been so 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 excited to read this book and it did not disappoint. It follows Evangeline and Jax. We are introduced to Jax in the Caraval trilogy. This is a spin-off trilogy if you did not know and we are following Evangeline as she is just searching for her happily ever after but her plans kind of get derailed when the boy she loves ends up getting married 
married to someone else. So she makes a deal with the Prince of Hearts to stop the wedding and kind of thrusts her into a whole new world, I guess. And yeah, I just really loved it. I love Stephanie Garber's writing so much. Her, her writing is so addictive and you can really immerse yourself in the story, I feel like. I also love the world that her books take place in and the description she writes about the world. It makes me feel like I am in the story with them. I loved following Jax and Evangeline and seeing their dynamic and seeing how Jax is in the aftermath of everything that happened in the Caraval trilogy because a lot ended up happening and I was very curious like how he would be in this book and it did not disappoint. It's very angsty and there's a lot of tension and drama and I just loved it. It was a lot of fun. I literally can't wait to read the second and third book and I'm very happy that they are on my May TBR. And the last book I read was Brusea by Brooke Wells. Brooke Wells does CrossFit and she's participated in a lot of CrossFit games and this is the story of her comeback from a potentially career ending injury. And I thought this was super interesting. She documented pretty Pretty much everything that happened from the injury itself to her comeback really. I thought it was really well written. I felt like I was with her and I could really feel her highs and her lows and it was also really inspiring and motivating to see how dedicated she was to her sport and to see what she did to get to where she was able to have this comeback. I do feel like this one is kind of niche but if you're into books about sports I would recommend this one. I ended up really enjoying it. So yeah that's going to be it for this video. Here's all the physical books I read. I had a great physical reading month and and I am just very happy I had a great reading month and that I felt a lot better with reading this month. It definitely makes me excited for all my May reading. So stay tuned if you want to see what I read in May. I'm going to be putting out lots of different reading vlogs. So subscribe if you want to see that and like if you enjoyed this video. And I will see you in another video soon.